This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up for an annual subscription at curiositystream.com slash HAI, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming service that HAI is a part of. Coming to a computer screen near you in eight years ago, it's Diablo 3, a thrilling new multiplayer gaming experience from Blizzard Entertainment where you can go on quests, cast spells, craft armor, earn weapons, and explore a fantasy world all while fighting against your ultimate enemy, hyperinflation. Wait, what? That doesn't seem right. I thought the villain in Diablo 3 was Diablo, or like Diablo the Third, who I'm guessing is Diablo's grandson? But no, the script definitely says hyperinflation. Alright, I guess this is an economics video now, so we can lose the dramatic filters and bring in some meaningless graphs. Yeah, that's better. In the simplest terms, inflation is when the value of a currency goes down, usually because of an increase in the money supply without a corresponding increase in scarce goods. Think of it this way. Pretend you live on an island, and all that island produces every year is five coconuts. Why were you abandoned on an island that only produces five coconuts, you ask? Because you're the type of annoying person who asks questions like why am I on a fake island when I'm just trying to use a hypothetical to explain something to you, you jerk. Now pretend there are five units of the island's currency in circulation. We'll call them Sam dollars. Get it? Like sand dollars, but my name is… you know, never mind. So each of the island's five coconuts will probably be worth one Sam dollar. But now let's say you make more SAM dollars, and now there are 500 SAM dollars circulating on the island. But still, the island only produces 5 coconuts. Now the price of coconuts will go up as everyone has more SAM dollars but is trying to use them to buy the same finite number of coconuts, effectively lowering the value of each SAM dollar. Now let's talk about Diablo 3. 2012's highly anticipated sequel to the Nintendo classic Kirby Squeak Squad. The first thing to understand about video game economics is the idea of faucets and sinks. Faucets are elements of the game that produce gold for players. For Diablo 3, that mainly came in the form of rewards for defeating enemies or completing quests. Sinks are elements of the game that remove gold from the game. But Diablo 3 had a sink problem, and not the kind a plumber could fix. The issue? The sinks didn't suck enough. Or in other words, they didn't remove enough gold from the game. The only way to spend significant money was on buying items from the in-game virtual blacksmith, but it turned out people didn't do that very much because it was easier to buy things from other players and because the in-game blacksmith refused to wear a shirt under his apron. Because the faucets produced more gold than the sinks eliminated, there was a rapid increase in the currency supply which started to lead to inflation. The problem then got much worse because of Diablo 3's real money auction house. You see, in an effort to prevent the internet black markets that had cropped up around Diablo 2, the Diablo 3 developers built a function into the game that allowed players to exchange actual real world money for virtual gold and virtual gold for actual real world money. I mean, come on, building an exchange for virtual currencies? When has that ever gone wrong? So what happened? Well, the game had a minimum transaction amount of 25 cents, and you could only sell in stacks of 100,000 gold units at a time, which created an implicit floor, or lower limit, for the possible price of gold of 25 cents for 100,000 gold units. Once the game was sufficiently flooded with gold that the sinks weren't draining, the exchanges neared that floor, and the game had to adjust before people turned to black market exchanges, so they raised the stack size to 1 million units but kept the minimum transaction at 25 cents. Now that selling gold at a lower price was possible, that's what people did, meaning the price for gold soon hit the new floor. In other words, in a matter of months, gold had undergone over 1,000% inflation, which in technical economic terms is referred to as a complete dumpster fire. What turns inflation into hyperinflation, though, isn't just that there's far too much currency, it's that people stop wanting that currency. In early 2013, the Diablo 3 players started to worry about when the exchange rate floor would be lowered again, which would devalue their gold more. That meant they didn't want to hold gold as an asset, so they desperately tried to spend all their gold as soon as possible before it lost value, and that's what creates hyperinflation. Think about it in simple terms of supply and demand. Supply of currency is going way up as everyone is flooding the market with it, trying to get rid of it. Meanwhile, demand for that currency is way down. People don't want it because they believe it will soon lose value. And when anything has high supply and low demand, its price plummets. Just ask the producers of Cats, a film that provided a very high supply of terrifying humanoid cat monsters to very low public demand for terrifying humanoid cat monsters. But things went from bad to full-blown diablo disaster on May 7, 2013 when a bug accidentally let players double their gold at will, causing prices to skyrocket, and though the bug was quickly fixed, the cycle of hyperinflation had already taken hold. 
One year after the game's launch, black market exchanges showed that Diablo 3's gold had undergone an inflation rate of 1 million percent. While this might sound like a hilarious video game incident, hyperinflation is a real phenomenon that affects real economies. It happened in Weimar, Germany in the 1920s, and sort of led to World War II, in Zimbabwe in the late 2000s, ultimately leading them to print bills worth 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars, and right now it's happening in Venezuela, where buying things requires so many bills that clerks no longer count money but weigh piles of it. And to think, it all could have been avoided if dictators just played more video games. Fascinating economic phenomenon in virtual economies are in no way limited to Diablo 3. There are super interesting examples in games like EVE, EverQuest, and Second Life, but talking about that would be a longer discussion that probably wouldn't perform well on YouTube, which is why I instead put it in an extended version of this video on Nebula. What's Nebula, you ask? It's a streaming platform me and my other educational-ish YouTuber friends came together to make where we don't have to worry about demonetization or the algorithm or video length. All we have to worry about is making great content. The best way to get access to Nebula is with the Curiosity Stream Bundle. For a limited time, for only $15, you get an annual subscription to Curiosity Stream, a streaming service with thousands of top quality documentaries, and to Nebula. You can get that bundle by going to curiositystream.com/hai.